Well, the season came to a close for the Illinois men's basketball program and in one of the more bizarre ways ever. They were tied at 23, approaching halftime, and then they literally couldn't, store, couldn't score and practically couldn't stop UConn. 30 unanswered points for the Huskies, and before you know it, the game was over. Same thing for the Illini season. Back here with Andy Katz. I mean, that was bizarre. This is an excellent Illinois team and they couldn't do anything. They kept attacking the big guy Klingon, and it kept not working. Terrence Shannon, who's been out of his mind incredible most of the season, but especially the month of March, couldn't get a bucket. What happened at the end? Well, I mean, first of all, as you said, they withstood the first punch. Yeah. They were down, I think, 9 nothing. Pretty quick. Um, climb back, 23 all, and actually Klingon came out of the game for a little bit. They get it there. And then a little quick burst by UConn at the end of the half. To make it 28-23. I was doing sideline. I, I met with Brad Underwood in the back uh, hallway. Uh, and he said, hey, I'm feeling, you know, like we're in a good spot. I mean, that's what he said, you know. We're only down five. We weathered the storm. He said to me in the hallway, we got we to gotta shoot threes. We're, we're not taking threes. Yeah. We're basically looking them off. And he said we're going to keep going to Klingon. That didn't work out. Yeah. Uh, Klingon had the game of, you know, I wouldn't say the game of his life, but he played a tremendous game. He was so fired up. And then, yeah, it's everything that went wrong or could go wrong went wrong because they didn't want to give him runouts. They didn't rebound well. It was one shot and, and, and they were done. They weren't taking those threes. And when they finally did, it felt like they were rushed, even though they weren't guarded as well and they were short. Uh, and then it's a steamroll. I mean, I can't remember ever seeing something like that. Yeah. Certainly not at that stage in the NCAA tournament against a team that was one of the top two offenses in the country. Right. That it was 30 to nothing. And then I went and listened to their huddle late in the second half, and, and it became a pride thing. You know, let's just stop the bleeding. Let's get it within 20 or something. Let's just stop. You know, yeah. let's fight. Let's finish this. Uh, it's really unex it's, it's hard to explain how it completely went away from them. They missed 22 out of 30 shots at the rim in this game. That's how unbelievable Klingon was at owning that space. They couldn't get anything done. And it's weird, too. They were a good three-point shooting team. They loved the three. They couldn't get them to fall. It reminds you of the game before when they beat Iowa State. They couldn't hit a free throw. Right. They missed half of their free throws just about. They still got that win to get into the Elite Eight, but... A bummer way for their season to come to a close. It was a great season for Illinois. You recap what the year was. They were the second place team in the Big Ten in the regular season. They won the Big Ten Tournament Championship. They make it to the Elite Eight for the first time since 2005. Again, it's a bummer for them to, to end the season the way it did in such disappointing fashion, but 20, they almost had 30 wins. They haven't done that since that magical 05 run. Well, and we have to acknowledge, and Brad Underwood told us this many times, I mean, they had three seasons. I mean, they had the season at the beginning uh, where they didn't play their best basketball. Remember, they lost at home to Marquette. They were starting to get going. And then Terrence Shannon was suspended, and he missed six games. And then during that time, Marcus Damask really excelled, and they put themselves in position to be one of those top two teams. And then when Shannon came back, that game against Northwestern, they absolutely blitzed them uh, in you know that first game. Um, actually, I'm sorry. It was the first game without him mm -hmm. in the Big Ten in January. Uh, where they beat Northwestern. Um, so they had six games without him. And then he returned. You know, they had that great game against Northwestern the second time around. Um, and they ended up mounting this campaign. And to me, their season, really, you could put a bow on when they won at Iowa to end the regular season. That last game on the last Sunday, that sent notice that, hey, we're going to make a deep run. They win at Iowa. They go through the Big Ten tournament to win that championship. And pre remember, the previous two years, the Big Ten tournament champ lost in the first round. Did not go very far, right. Iowa two years ago to Richmond. Last year, as we know, Purdue to FDU. They had a shaky first half against Moorhead State, and then they flipped the switch, and they were great up until UConn. Right. Well, they will be losing guys off this team next year, but if you ask Brad Underwood, he'll absolutely tell you this program is in a really good spot right now.